Hi, this is Maggie from Design Code Debug Repeat. If you're a beginning programmer, a beginning game programmer, a programming teacher, or if you just find this content interesting, please subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting lessons, tips, and cool programming stuff regularly. And today is the cool programming stuff because I was really excited to see the changes in image transparency in Pygame 2. And you may have seen this program before. This is my program where I wanted to create an accordion illusion of the original image, then the image with the skull superimposed. And this is sort of the final version, although I don't know if it's neat enough for me to share with you, but it uses facial recognition to superimpose the skull over the face of whatever portrait you choose, but then you can use um, the keyboard to make modifications. So I'm just um, sort of nudging it and stretching it with some of the keys, but then I can use the um, keyboard also to increase or decrease the overall transparency of the skull. But that wasn't enough. I wanted to be able to edit it in individual spots because like, for example, I like the width of the skull and the height of the skull here, but I don't like that it's superimposed over the collar of the, the person's clothing. So I also wanted to add the ability to do sort of a fuzzy edit by clicking. So I can can see I can decrease the transparency by clicking with the mouse just in specific locations and this is a sort of fuzzy sort of paintbrush that I'm using and I really wouldn't be able to do all this without the new transparency or it would be a lot more difficult I think without the new transparency settings in Pygame so we're going to take a look at those and in, in a much simpler example I just wanted to show you my motivation so I have these images. This is um, a ping, and you can see that there's an alpha channel in the ping. So this is a star, but we've got some fuzziness around the edges of the star, which is a, a transparency setting. That's a background we're going to use. Now this is a GIF. So it's white and red, and those are the only two colors in the GIF. And this looks the same, but it's a JPEG. So the white isn't completely white everywhere. So we wouldn't be able to set a color key with this the way we can with a GIF because we don't have exactly white in all of the locations. Okay, so let's look at the program that I did write to demonstrate this to you. And to start, I think we probably just want to talk about those different kinds of transparency. So Let's um, actually let's run this because I've got some information that's going to be printed out to the console. OK, so you can see that it blitz the background and then I blit the three different images that I showed you. This upper left star is the JPEG with the white but not completely white everywhere background. This is the GIF and I've set the color key on this and this is the ping. OK, and down here I've printed some information about those images. So you can get the color at any point on a surface. So I've gotten the color for the top left, so that top left point, zero, zero of each surface. I've gotten the color for the top of the star. So when I say top point there, I mean the point of the star. So it's actually not quite at the top, um, but top point of the star, which is about um, 50x, 5y. And then the center point of the star, because I'm gonna show you something kind of cool with that. And what we see is four integers ranging from zero to 255. So you are probably familiar with RGB color. So the first one is the red, um, the second one is the green, and the third one is the blue component of the color, but the last one is the alpha. So that's the transparency. And that also ranges from zero to 255, with 255 being completely opaque and zero being invisible. So with the alpha channel star, all around the star is invisible. Um, so we've got zero, 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 zero. So it doesn't really matter what this color is. Zero means that this is invisible. It's completely transparent. But for the others, this is white, right? 255, 255, 255, and completely opaque, 255. Now for the star that's a GIF for which I've set the color key, that upper left corner is also completely white and completely opaque. So why don't we see it? There's sort of two different kinds of transparency. One is the kind that's embedded in the information for the surface, and that's what we're seeing here. But the other is the color key, which is a single value associated with the surface that's used in blitting. So I set the color key for this surface to white 
so white won't be blitted, but it's still part of the underlying image. Now for the top point, that's the, you know, the point of the star, you can see it's, it's mostly red in the JPEG, but it's got a little bit of a blue component. And again, that's because it's a JPEG. So um, it's, it's just not stored the same way a GIF is. There's, it's a lossy format. We lose a little bit of information. It, it blurs a little. Um, and the center point isn't completely red. It's 255, right? 254 rather. So it's, it's not completely red, but it is completely opaque everywhere. That's that last number. And for the GIF, nice and crisp with the colors. So white in the upper left, red at the point of the star and red in the center, completely opaque. And for the alpha channel star, you can see that the top of the star is, is a little bit fuzzy, right? Um, so we have an opacity at the very point of 53. That's pretty transparent, right? 255 is completely opaque and zero is completely transparent. So it fades into complete opacity in the middle, but at the top, it's a little bit transparent. Okay, so if you want to look at how how we created that, then I can show you some of the stuff that we can do with it. But let's take a look at how it's created first. Um, and it's pretty straightforward, but one thing is important. So first, I simply load in the images using pygame.image.load, so the JPEG, the GIF, and the ping. But instead of using convert, I convert alpha. It gives me the option of setting the overall transparency of, of the image. Okay, um, and with the GIF, I set the color key to white. So as we noted, the GIF is white all around, but when we set the color key to white, it doesn't change the underlying image, doesn't change that alpha information within the surface, but when the surface is blitted, the white pixels aren't blitted. And then the, just for the printing, what I did was used get at, which will get me the color at whatever location I pass in. So 0, 0, 55 for the point of the star and 50, 50 for the center of the star. And then I just also have a little function to blit them. Okay. Okay, so I want to show you some things that we can do with the transparency here. So first of all, we can change the overall alpha of the surface. And that's, again, that's why we want to convert alpha when we load these and convert them. And this is also something that's used in blitting. It's not going to change the values that are stored for the surface. So I've programmed this to respond to the minus key and the plus key on the keypad. Now there, it's, it's already completely opaque. There, the default alpha is 255. So I'm going to start by reducing. Okay, and now again, you can see these values haven't changed, so I'm printing them every time I do something. Um, so I'm going to press minus again, and I'm, I'm going to keep pressing minus. You're going to see that these values aren't going to change at all, but look at the image as I press minus. Now you can really see that those stars are fading. So this is, this is a result of set alpha. Okay, so the, the K plus and the, the K minus um, on the keypad, KP plus and KP minus, I'm getting the alpha of each surface and subtracting 10 from it and setting it to that alpha. So that again is used in blitting. It's not changing the values in each of the pixels of the surface, but when it's blit, it's blit with that transparency. And then I can bring it back up again to full opacity. We could print that too. You can see I'm getting alpha. So we could print the alpha so that we could see exactly what it is. So we can mix now pixel by pixel transparency with the overall alpha that's used to blit the image because even the one with the alpha transparency is fading. We couldn't do that before. The other thing we can do that's really cool, and maybe you could do this before, I don't know, but we can set that per pixel transparency if we want to. So I've set the space bar to subtract from the transparency for the center of each of these stars. And this is a computationally expensive thing to do. So you certainly wouldn't want to do it if performance were an issue or if you were doing a large area. But I'm going to press the space bar. And what you want to note is, first of all, watch the middle of these start to fade out, but also look at the center point value. So right now it's 255, so completely opaque. Now I'm going to press the space bar 
there we go, and I've subtracted 50. And so you can see that that center opacity is down to 205 and you start to see the checkerboard come through. So if I keep pressing spacebar, we're going to see the opacity of that center area reduced. And again, I can still modify how they're blitted. So all of these are stored with alpha information. So we can go in and adjust the transparency of any pixel in any image. So we could we could get an effect like this by adjusting the transparency, like feathering it out to the edges. So for that, I used get at and set at. So get at gets the color at a particular pixel, and that's what I was using to print the table, right? Quite simple. Get the color at pixel 0, 0 at you know, 55 or 50, 50, and print those. But once I have that color, which is the tuple that you see, red, green, blue, and alpha, then I can change it. So what I did was I subtracted 50 from the elements at index 3, which is the alpha. Red is 0, green is 1, and blue is 2. Alpha is 3. Um, but if it, if it was already at 0, or if, if that's going to bring it below 0, I just set it to 0 so that we don't get an alpha value that's invalid. And then set at, I put the pixel that I want to set, and then I just put in the new color. So we're able to do a pixel by pixel transparency. We're able to do a color key so that we don't blit a particular color. And we're able to set an alpha, which affects how it's blitted as far as transparency. So we can make a particular color completely transparent, but we can also set the overall transparency of the image when it's blitted, and we can set the pixel by pixel transparency of the image by bringing in a, a PNG, an, an image that already has that pixel by pixel transparency information, or we can actually set individual pixels if we want to. And just remember to do the convert alpha when you load the images in. Now, when you are going to create an image from scratch, you can pass in this flag, SRC alpha, in order to get that information. So if you're not loading the image, if you're just going to create a surface just using an initializer, then be sure to pass in that SRC alpha. So where's the constructor or initializer? Um, so that would be um, the flags. So surface with height and then flags equal and use SRC alpha in order to create a surface that's going to have that alpha channel. Well, that's it. I think this is really cool. I was really excited and I know many of you are interested in transparency and my old video, while accurate, doesn't tell the whole story anymore because we can do these cool new things. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That tells me that you like this sort of content and I should bring you more. And if you like this sort of content, please subscribe to Design Code Debug Repeat. Take care.